Hi friends, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and today we're going to take a little trip with the IntelliGel Rainmaker. Let's take a listen to this patch that I set up, this uh, preset, and then I'll explain a little bit more about what's going on. We have a little gated piano thing coming from Morphogene here, which will be our main sound source. This is what it sounds like, dry. Let's go ahead and bring in Rainmaker. is a incredibly transformative uh, delay module. IntelliGel calls it a 16-tap stereo spectral rhythm delay and comb resonator. Uh, I bought it a while ago um, and put it in my main rack. It's been in a few of my performances, and I thought it'd be fun to put it in a pod and experiment with it a little bit just on its own. And I got to the point where I wanted to do it on camera with you. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and load my one tap here, which is basically nothing. And let's go ahead and uh, just mess around with this a little bit from scratch. So I'm going to turn this to 50% wet right here, and I'm going to hit play over here. So I find in order to learn Rainmaker, it's good to like send something intermittent in here. So that's why we have this little piano thing going on. I want space in between so I can really hear what's going on. Let's go ahead and undo any modulation we have going into here and talk about the clock first. Here's a clock input. And if we go to our uh, my aesthetic, if we go to our div here, we will see our clock. I'm at 80 BPM over here. So I'm going to change this to divide by two. So now we're at 80 BPM. We can hear this one tap that's turned on right now working. So each one of these is a division of the beat, 1 through 16. And depending on what your BPM is, these will sort of line up differently. So let's go ahead and listen to that. I'm going to go to a level here, and I'm going to turn them all up by holding down the encoder. And I'm going to turn the feedback all the way down. So we are getting 16 even delay taps with no modification to them whatsoever. And we don't have any feedback. All we're hearing are these 16 steps right now. So uh, let's go to tap edit mode, tap number here, and mute, and start muting some of these. As we mute them, we just turn them off completely. So we can make rhythms this way, right? So already pretty fun and powerful just to be able to create little tap rhythms based on what we want to do. But of course, that's just the beginning. So all these controls down here, pan, cutoff, uh, filter types, all that, we have control over that for each tap. So I'm going to go back to tap level here, and I'm going to click the encoder in edit mode. 
And you can see we get the ability to to send them like that. We can actually actually have them upsend too, which is kind of neat. to pan and play with pan balance. So in the same way that we had control over level, we can push the encoder and automatically get a spread. We can also go into each individual tab and pan them. essentially creating a sort of ping pong that we have decided on, which is really, really fun. Let's go ahead and do this. Filters, we have access to filter types. And again, if I hold this down, I will assign filters. <laughs> on moss to everything. I can also have them sweep, like the same way that we had the uh, pans and stuff sweep. So I have low passes on the beginning and then band passes and then uh, high passes. If I go into cutoff now, I can start affecting both cutoff and the Q. I go back to level. Turn these all up again. So yes, Rainmaker is a delay in the classic sense, but I think it's actually a little bit easier to think of it almost as a a, a rhythm creator um, in that like you pick these uh, these taps and have them occur. And create wild new rhythms on top of your original signal, which sounds like this. So we also have some cool features here. Let's go into routing config. Hit it a few times and see where it says trigger here. I'm going to turn this to randomize. And I'm going to go back over here where we have the word rand and change this to something. Let's change this to filter cuts and then when i hit this trigger it's going to randomize the filter cuts so let's go look i was doing this earlier so instant vibe and this trigger is associated with this trigger input right here so you can have a patch constantly shift through all this stuff including but not <laughs> everything so if we go back to our rand and go to all this is going to get a little weird Build that up again. Tap level. All up. So by individually randomizing
the individual parameters, you can create unique rhythms. There's some other stuff we can do with this trigger. Freeze. Which creates even more fun rhythmic stuff. And reverse. We also can assign these mods to things. So if we click mod here, you can see right now this is assigned to a delay mod level. Let's go ahead and turn down our delay a bit. There we go. Turn on our comb too. We'll get to the comb in just a second. Let's go ahead and pitch sit some of these grains. Did I just say pitch shit? Let's pitch shit some of these grains. Let's go ahead and click pitch shift and pitch shift some of these. There's a uh, feature in here called piles, which uh, means that right now we have 16 stacks of one tap, meaning we have 16 individual taps of one. But we can actually change this to one, two, three, four. That means we have four taps on each delay now. So if we go in here, we can actually make chords. Let's go back to pitch. So with piles, you can think of this as being div divided into four sections now, and each one of these four sections of taps, which we've already determined are individual taps in the delay, are now occurring here, 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 and here, divided by four, and they're all bunched up on each other. So they're all happening at once in four clusters. We can, you know, go back to two of eight. pitches uh, detuned, all those pitches set in different places, we're creating chords off of this. The tap grid here determines what division each tap represents in relation to our BPM. pretty magical, honestly. Rainmaker is definitely one of those uh, devices that you're going to want front and center easily accessible because you're going to be doing a lot of this editing to make it do things for you. It's definitely a very... Uh, not knob device. It's it, Everything's pretty accessible on it, but it's definitely about getting in and doing little edits to things and um, getting to know their terminology when it comes to this. Because honestly, when I got it, I uh, really had a hard time understanding it. And uh, I almost hated it. But the more that I spend it with it in front of me, the more I like it. It just takes some getting used to.
One of the things about this randomized function that kind of sucks is that same thing with the mods here. Once you have affected something with it, it sticks. Meaning that, like, if I randomized all my pitches in here, uh, I would be stuck with those. So I'd have to go in and individually sit them back. I don't know of a way to uh, reset them, unfortunately. So you have to be careful. Let's try some other material through it and see if we can talk about the comb a little bit, okay? like that. Let's talk about the comb filter. Meters and gain. Comb is up. Routing. Make sure everything's turned up here. Routing. Let's do delay plus comb. So now we'll hear this and this separately. And let's turn the comb on. So a comb filter is a really, really, really fast little pingy thing in various shapes. In uniform, you can hear it just glitching, right? There we go. There we go. So I can get this in different timings. If I was going to make this really slow, our delay clock, divide it by like 16, and then go into our clock source here, you can hear now that the comb is actually sounding like a delay. If we go into pattern slope and start messing around with our pattern slope, we're going to hear some changes. So if you look in the manual for the Rainmaker, you'll see all of these shapes that these represent. And when we've slowed down the comb this far, you can really hear the individual pings and their shape in time. Comb filter can even do random stuff. So let's go down to slope. So right now, every comb, a little ping in this comb, is even. Sort of like when we turned up the levels of all the delay pings to the same amount. But we can shape this. So you can think of it as rising in volume, falling, swelling. If we speed this up, it'll sound much different. Start sounding almost like a shitty reverb. We also control the number of taps. So, it's kind of like feedback. But we do have that right here. I think that's neat. There's one more thing we have access to here, and that is in here. So the comb filter actually has a sort of like resonance uh, 
shape to it in terms of its frequency response. Right now, it's set as guitar, which means it's going to uh, process the frequencies in a certain way. And we can kind of hear that in the comb response itself. find that raw and clarinet have the uh, the most high frequency response if that's what you're looking for so we're able to create a pretty cool little granular cloud for us both the delay and the comb have the ability to have their uh, basic timing structure modified uh, which does re uh, relate to sort of like pitch shifting a little bit, which is what we're getting here, which is nice. Now, we can choose to send this into the delay or send the delay into this, which is pretty wild. So let's get some taps going on. Let's go back into our div here. By the way, at super fast divs, we will get something akin the car plus strong synthesis. So that's just the comb with the uh, the type of pattern being modulated with a sample and hold wave. So let's take mod B and assign this to comb. Comb density. So we've just assigned mod B to comb density. So this is what you can get out of modulating the comb, which is pretty cool. By the way, we have got no delay in right now. <laughs> it's just the comb. <laughs> we can turn the delay on if you want. Go ahead and randomize our delay and see how wild we can make this. So I'm going to go back into routing config, change this to randomize, and then pick my randomization. So let's first randomize our tap levels, then our pans, cutoff, cues, and types. And then let's go to our pitch shift and start manipulating some pitch shifts. Got some feedback. Cool. I like that a lot. And then we're going to go into here again, change this to reverse. And let's trigger it. Really cool. I 
to remind ourselves what this started like. Shall we? Rainmaker is absolutely a device that wants you to just spend some time with it. That's all it really wants. Hang out with it. Play with it. Drink some tea and see what it has to say. It wants to listen to you. It's here for you. modulation channel. Let's take this and put it into pitch shift. It certainly takes up a lot of room in a rack, and I wouldn't call it the most fun module to use, but it is an incredible sound design tool. all my uh, presets, basically, uh, Aphex Twin uh, track names. I would go as far as to say as Rainmaker is a module that works as a sound design tool on its own. Like, I'm really loving this little focus rack thing here. Um, it's amazing how much you can get out of this from a transformative nature. All right, let's do one more scene and uh, see what we can get out of it, shall we? I'm going to hit stop. And we're going to unplug everything but clock. If I had to guess, I would say right now my freeze is stuck on. Sure is. get our patch set up. So I've been using Morphogene over here uh, as a sort of timed sample playback device. And let's go to uh, channel 8, which is providing clock. So that's right. That's the correct clock. And then 7 is our playback. So let's go ahead and make this uh, divide by 4. By the way, if you're wondering what's going on with these cables here, which I'm sure you are, uh, I'm using a little envelope on the four out of PAMS as a sort of metronome because <laughs> it's just sending the voltage right into Morphogena. It's uh, acting as a little time. One of the things about Morphogene is uh, when you start turning up the gene size, if your clock you'll see that it will stop playing based on this play gate. So you're able to create little, little moments. If you turn this up, it'll start doing pitch spreads, which is kind of nice. Put this back down, though. Turn this down, too. Cool. 
cool. All right, let's make something new. Let's go into our levels. Make sure our feedback's all the way down. We're just gonna be listening to our taps. And let's go into um, our div. Make sure that we're diving at our tempo. Same thing with our clock source here. Let's start carving out some taps. So actually what I'm gonna do for right now, I'm gonna take this gate that we were using before. I'm gonna go to rend uh, and I'm gonna set this to tap mutes. And then I'm gonna go into my routing and config and set this to randomize. So this will randomize our tap mutes, which will create new patterns from the tap mutes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pitch shift some of these. So essentially what we'll get is like randomized pitch chord sort of relationships, uh, depending on which tap is muted. to go into our filters type and turn these all to high pass. Turn the queue up and turn the cutoff. assign mod A to the filter cutoff. And I'm going to go into here and we're going to modulate our filter cutoffs randomly. I'm going to switch these to band passes. Mod B, let's change this to Try grid. Yeah, that's cool. Let's get another sample and hold out of here. All right, let's get the comb going. going to turn off the delay for right now and we're going to listen to just the comb.
one last wet dry before we go. I'll let this play out with the wet. Anyways, uh, this has been fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you. Thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is the Intelligent Rainmaker, and I hope you have a very rainy day. I hope you're wet. I hope you're just wet.